everyone, I'm Hallie. Welcome to a new series where I try to find my niche. Over the next seven weeks, I'm gonna be posting three videos a week with various topics. No, these vegetables are not burning. I'm going to be trying five different gluten-free recipes that you could try at home, so let's get started. The first recipe is called a leftover egg frittata. All recipes I use will be put in the description. First, crack 12 eggs into a bowl. I only did eight because I needed the rest for something else, but I recommend sticking to the recipe. Then add pepper and salt to taste. Add one fourth, ugh, not one fourth, one half cup of milk. Then add two tablespoons of unsalted butter to a pan, and when that's melted, add the eggs. Don't mind me just playing with the spatula here. <laughs> then add about a cup of cooked veggies, just whatever you have left in the fridge. You can do whatever veggies you want. And about a cup of cheese. I should have gone a little bit heavier with the cheese, but mix it, mix it, mix it. Anyways, put that in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. Ta-da, look at that bad boy. Ooh. I'm so excited to try this. Look how good it turned out. Ooh, with the crisp bottom. Now it's time for the taste test. Drum roll, please. I didn't realize you could see how much I liked it on my face. <laughs> this recipe took me about 40 minutes to complete and I give it an eight out of 10. The next recipe is a chicken crust pizza. The crust has three simple ingredients, one 10 ounce can of chicken, one egg, and one ounce of grated Parmesan cheese. Mix that up until it is well combined. Then spray a pan with spray butter so the pizza crust won't stick and drop the mixture right on there. Use a fork to spread out the mixture until it's flat and even. You could make it into a classic circle, but I chose this rectangle shape. Boil some water and drop in three tomatoes. <laughs> you can look at them bobbing in there. I don't know why, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> Once the skin starts to come up, pull the tomatoes out and put them into a bowl of cold water to shock them. <laughs> Be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want to break the bowl, especially if it's glass. I should have used a different bowl. Put that pizza crust in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and bring your tomatoes to the cutting board. Surgically remove the skin from the tomatoes just like this. Ugh, that's so satisfying and chop the ends off. Don't forget to do that before you put them in the blender. Oop. And this is where you add your two cloves of garlic and a little splash of olive oil, then some Italian seasoning. Just a little more. You okay. Take the crust out of the oven and sauce that bad boy up. You're not gonna use mozzarella? Where is it? <laughs> Good thing my boyfriend caught me before I used the wrong cheese. Phew, what a lifesaver. Make sure to use mozzarella. Then I added a little more Italian seasoning. Yeah. This is the part where you can really customize and put your own toppings. I chose what I had on hand, which was pepperoni. Is that bothering you? <laughs> yes. My boyfriend didn't like that the pepperonis were uneven. Put the pizza in the oven at 500 degrees for about 7 minutes, but that time depends on your toppings. I had a bit of trouble taking the pizza off the pan, so my boyfriend brought in a second spatula to help me out. It's 
finally coming up. Oh. Nice. Some more Mesa Gray Mark. That is so good. That's my favorite one so far. Go stop looking at me. They're gonna be like, who's she looking at? Well, stop looking at me. I give that one a 10 out of 10. Okay, I bumped it down to a 9 out of 10 because it is a little bit soggy, but that's on me for not drying out the chicken before I made it into the dough. The fourth recipe is zoodles with portobello mushrooms. For those that don't know, zoodles are what the chef people call noodles made from zucchini. My first attempt was to use this random tool, I don't know what it's called. It makes thin spiral cuts. It almost turned out how I wanted, but I wanted a more stable shape, so I decided to use a cheese grater and slid the zucchini long ways to make the noodles. I don't know if it's just me, but those look fantastic. There's my puppy looking for scraps in the background. Heat up some olive oil in a pan. I may have done a little too much. I'm just gonna pan fry the mushrooms. Yeah, pan fry them. <gasps> Why are they, ew! What? That's how they look, boo. Slimy. That's how they look? They smell weird. Yeah, I know. No, no, don't, don't get this. Because I don't need their judgment. Last time they were real judgy. Real mean. Said I held a knife wrong. Add some salt and add some pepper. Then some red pepper chili flakes. Then stir it all up. And shout out to my amazing boyfriend for cutting up the mushrooms. Place the zoodles in the pan. Ooh, I love that sizzle. Cook that up and then add the mushrooms to a separate pan with olive oil and onions. I also added some minced garlic to the zoodles. Once both of those are done, plate your meal. To make it look more fancy, I added shredded Parmesan cheese. Let's give it a taste. Boom, the flavors were explosive. I absolutely loved this one. It took about 30 minutes to make and this one was without a doubt a 10 out of 10. The fourth recipe is stuffed bell peppers. Keep in mind, I altered the recipe to only make two stuffed bell peppers. First, chop off the tops and save the extra pepper from the tops for later. Brown some ground beef. Then put it aside on a paper towel lined plate or bowl. Yes, I know I spilled some, don't worry about that. Cut up the extra peppers and dice an onion. It was a thick onion, so I had some trouble chopping it, but I put it through my vegetable cutter. Then add some olive oil in a pan and start cooking up those onions and peppers. Once those are cooked, add chopped garlic and finely chopped zucchini. Next is the tomatoes and season that with red chili pepper flakes. That's a lot of veggies, dude. <laughs> it almost looks like too many. No such thing. Well, pretty sure half of these are fruits. Then after that's all cooked together, add back in the ground beef and rice. The last ingredient is good old shredded cheese. Mm. 
Stuff the bell peppers and sprinkle some more cheese on top. And that goes into the oven at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. This recipe took about an hour and 15 minutes. Honestly, it wasn't too great. If I were to make it again, I would have added a lot more seasoning. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of bell peppers, but I figured I had to at least try it. I gave this one a 5 out of 10. The final recipe is a quick and easy chicken tostada. The recipe suggests a rotisserie chicken, but I didn't get one, so cook up some chicken. Add some vegetable oil to a small bowl and use, oh, I think it's called a baster, I'm not sure, to spread a very small amount onto both sides of a corn tortilla. You don't want a puddle of oil, you just want them to have some shine. Put them in the oven at 450 degrees for 5 minutes, then take them out and flip them over. Those go back into the oven for another 5 minutes and they should come out a nice golden brown. Ta-da! Once the chicken is done cooking, shred it up. Put the shredded chicken in a pan along with canned corn and a can of black beans which should be drained and rinsed. Season it up with some salt and taco seasoning. Mix that up and then add in your choice of salsa. Put the mixture onto the tortillas. It got a little wild, and I know they aren't the prettiest, but stay with me. Top it with some cheese and put the tostadas back in the oven until the cheese is nice and melted. Wow. Ooh, ah. I added a bit more of that salsa from earlier. Here's me dancing. That was kind of awkward. But anyways, let's try them. I give this recipe a 10 out of 10, no hesitation. It was super simple and super tasty. If I were to make it again, the only thing I would change is buying that rotisserie chicken because cooking the chicken is what took the longest. I couldn't put it down, it was seriously delicious. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed all the recipes and I highly encourage that you try all of them. Depending on what kind of engagement I get on the cooking videos, I might be doing more. So if you really like a topic that I do, make sure to like and comment and tell me how much you liked it so I could keep posting videos like that. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!